Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this invoice in Word. With this invoice you can save it as a template to be used over and over again with simply changing the information in the centre. So let's open a new document. So with my cursor at the top here I'm just going to press the return key a few times then go to insert table, click on the drop down, click insert table and up here we're going to insert five columns by 10 rows and press OK. You can see our table has been inserted. So I'm just going to select it all by clicking on this top left square. Go to table layout and in the height here, I'm going to select it all. Press one and click enter. You can see now I've expanded those rows so they're a little taller to give us a little bit more space. But what I'm also going to do is to change where the text will go in my cells. So you can see they're currently at the top, which is where this blue shading is. I'm going over to this section here and I'm going to select center. And then at the top here, I'm going to insert some text. But before I do that, I'm just going to select these two cells, go to merge cells and select these two cells and once again, select Merge Cells. In this cell here, I'm just gonna paste in some text. And if you want to know about the font, then if I go to the Home tab, this is the font I've used. And it's font size 14 at the top, but it's reduced down to font size 12 for this text here. And then over here, I'm going to do the same. Just paste in some text. And I'm going to make sure this is at the top of my cell. So select the cell, go to Table Layout, and select this icon here, align to top right. Now this might all look a little strange because of all the border lines, but don't worry, we'll get rid of all of those and only put in the ones we want to be selected. So we'll begin to put our text at the top here in this row, but before we do that, we're just going to move this line over, just hover over it, click and drag the line over. And I'm going to do the same with this line here and then I'm going to select just these cells here because I want to make them even and then go to this icon here, distribute columns and they will even out those cells there. So I'm going to start putting in my text at the top. I'm going to miss out this column here because this is going to be a spacer column. So now you want to put all your items in this row here. You can see we need a little bit more space. So all we need to do is to grab this line here hover over it until it changes, just move it over here. I'm also just going to move this over a little bit, give us a bit more space, but then to make sure that these are all equal, if you just select those columns there, go to table layout and select distribute columns. Now we can put the remaining text in here, then we're going to leave a row and then put all our subtotals in here. Then these two cells we're going to merge, so click Merge. These two cells, just select them, Merge. I pasted in this text, and just so that you know about the text, if I go to the Home tab, again, it's this font here, and font size 16, I've just made it a little bigger, and the same with this one. Once you've finished, we're gonna click in the top left corner, go to Table Design, and over here is where you can customize all of your border lines. So I'm going to go to borders, click on the drop down and select no borders. You can see all the lines have disappeared. Now I've got my grid line switched on. If you don't, you can go all the way down to view grid lines and make sure it's checked. There you can see all of your grid lines just as a guide. They won't be printed or saved as a PDF and we get rid of them at the end. So just deselect the table. So for these rows here, I want some lines in between and at the top. So select those cells, go to borders, Go to Inside Horizontal Borders. But you can see it hasn't highlighted the top one or the bottom one. So go back to Borders, select Bottom Border, click on the drop down and select Top Border. If I deselect it, you can see how it's highlighted those border lines. If I just take off the grid lines, you can see how that looks. We're going to do the same with this one. Select these two cells, borders, top border. And then we've got, just got that line there. 
So onto the remaining text, here we're going to use Word Art. So go to Insert, Word Art, select this one here. Now all these Word Arts generally come with a shadow. So if I zoom in, you can see there's a slight shadow on the edge of this text. Now you can keep it if you want to, but to get rid of it, make sure this text box is selected. Make sure you're on Shape Format and go to Format Pane. Then go to Text Options, which is this one. Go to this icon in the middle. Go to Shadow. Click on the drop down and select No Shadow. And there you've just got your basic text. So in here, I'm just going to type Invoice. Just make sure it's selected. Make sure your cursor is not inside because if it is, you won't be able to customize it unless you select all of the text. Go to the Home tab, click on the drop down and just select any font of your choice. I'm going to select this one. Then you can go to this icon here, which is increase font size. Once again, you can play around with that until you've got the font size of your choice. I'm just going to move my table down a bit. So put the cursor around about here and then just hit the return key as you go. And then it's good to line this text up with the edge of this text here. You can use your arrow keys. Once you have done, then you can move your up arrow key just to place it exactly where you want it. Just going to move the table up a little bit. Then we're going to insert the logo here. So go to insert pictures picture from file, select your logo and click insert. Once it's inserted, you won't be able to move it. So make sure you keep it selected. Go to wrap text and select in front of text. And then you can move it and resize it. Once again, it's good design to make sure it's lined up with the edge here if it looks okay. And then you can either line the middle up with the middle of this text or the top with this top of the text there. It's completely up to you, whatever works for you and whatever you think looks right. So in this case, I think I might move that up to be halfway between. Perfect. So for the text at the bottom, I'm actually going to copy this because I've taken the shadow off. I don't really want to do it again. So select it, hold down your Alt or Option key, click and drag, which is the quickest and easiest way to copy and paste. Then I'm just going to change the text here and then I'm just going to go to the Home tab and just reduce the size of the text. Once again, I'm going to copy and paste this, deselect, move this over here. Then I've just changed the text and I've also changed the font. So if I click inside here, I've gone back to the original font here, whereas this one here is this font here, which is the same as the invoice title at the top. I'm just going to move this one down here and this one here. Now, the reason I've done these in two boxes is because I can move them around and completely customize its location as far or as close to this as I want it to. Once again, make sure the edges here are lined up. Generally, you have to do that by eye because often the margin between the two you can see is not the same. So even if we move this over to the right, sometimes these margins aren't the same. You can try it, you can select them both, hold down the command or control key to select multiple items. Go to layout, go to align and select align to right, deselect. And if you're happy with its alignment, then that's great. You can align them that way. I'm just gonna move my arrow key down, move this down, perfect. So I'm gonna borrow this one again, copy and paste it the way we did before. Then add some alternative text then copy and paste it one more time. Then once again, I'm going to add that text there. Again, I can line all of these up, select multiple items, align, align to left. And then if you're happy with the placement of these two, you can always go to group, select group. Then you've got one group here that you can line up with the edge here. Use your arrow key to move that down. And the same with this one, you can group these two together, select them both and then group them together. Then when you zoom out, you're not happy with the placement, it's far easier to select a group and just move the group itself rather than each individual item. 
I'm just lining up this text with the edge of my table. So once you're happy with the layout of your invoice, it's important that you save this as a template. Now, ideally, you would empty all of the items, such as the prices and the items here, if each time you use it, they're going to be completely different. And then you can put in everything that you need for each individual invoice. I'm not going to do that today because I'm just going to show you how to save that as a template. So go to File, Save as Template. Make sure at the top here you insert a name for your file. Then make sure you save it in the Templates file here. And then the file format needs to be Microsoft Word Template. Just click Save. Then when you open any new item in Word, then go down to New. Then you'll see Personal. Then here you'll see Invoice. And this is your invoice. Looks a bit odd in the thumbnail, but don't worry, it will open just as you've formatted it. And then you just click Create. What will happen then is you'll change all of this. And when you click Save, it will ask you to save it as a completely new document therefore keeping the original. So if you can't be bothered to do all of this, there is a link in the description below that will enable you to download this document. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.